Hello Internet, Winston here with another chapter in my Grand CNC Adventure. This week I made a significant upgrade to my Shape Oko 2 that'll let me start working on more serious projects in the future. I installed some threaded inserts into my wasteboard so that I can bolt down workpieces instead of taping them. Now I can machine harder materials like wood or plastic without the workpiece shifting like you see here. People on the Shape Oko forums have already shared a couple takes on this, with most people using T-nuts. It doesn't look that great in my opinion, and I feel like the edges of the MDF will be subjected to a lot of abrasion and damage over time, after repeated attempts at indexing bolts in the hole. Instead of T-nuts, I went with flange threaded inserts that are designed for wood. The thick external threads cut into the wood and hold the insert securely. The flange provides a durable wearing surface and lies flush with the MDF. I picked up a pack of 100 for about $14 from McMaster Car. Installing these threaded inserts, however, is a bit tricky. First of all, the inserts need to be fitted into a 9mm hole or the closest imperial equivalent. Unless you buy a specialized drill bit, it's almost impossible to do by hand. Having the flange of the insert rest flat with a wasteboard requires a countersink. I mean, this would normally be a challenge, except I have a CNC machine at my disposal. The 9mm hole can be milled easily enough, and instead of a countersink, I chose to do a counter bore. For such a thin flange, it wouldn't make much of a difference. One change I did make to the original plans was to shrink the 9mm hole to an 8.5mm hole. The MDF is a little softer than wood, so I wanted the threads to bite in deeper and the body of the insert to rest more snugly in the hole. For something this simple, I started an inkscape. I sketched an 8.5mm hole for the body of the insert, and a concentric 11.75mm hole for the flange. Both of these were centered at 0, 0. Before I go any further, let me give two warnings about going from Inkscape to MakerCam. First off, before you import an SVG from Inkscape, you need to change the resolution of MakerCam. MakerCam by default assumes that 72 pixels fit in 1 inch. Programs like Adobe Illustrator follow this rule, Inkscape doesn't. Inkscape goes by 90 pixels per inch. You can set this scale in MakerCam's preferences. If you don't, everything you cut will be 25% larger than you expect. The second warning is, don't use metric. I know, it kills me too, but if you use centimeters instead of inches, your G-code will come out unusable. When you export metric G-code, MakerCam starts pushing out really long decimals. If you're using an Arduino-based system, individual lines may come out too long for gerbil to digest. Sometimes it'll make your system spit out an error, sometimes it'll send your CNC to impossible coordinates. Either way, it's not good. One way you can get around this is to truncate all of your decimals to four or five places. You can write a post-processor to do it, or use pre-existing snippets of code from other people. Or you could just leave MakerCam in inches. Anyway, once you get your SVG into MakerCam, mill your inner circle to a depth of 5 eighths of an inch, and your outer circle to a depth of 1 16th of an inch. I recommend a step height of 0.125 inches, a feed rate of between 8 to 10 inches per minute, and a plunge rate of 20 inches per minute. Check your G-code however you want, and then get ready to mill. Since we placed all of the circles at 0, 0, you can start the spindle exactly where you want the threaded insert centered. Reset your machine 0, and hit send. Once you're confident that your G-code works consistently, you can program in a pattern of holes. At one point, I was machining groups of four holes per run. You're going to have to slide the wasteboards around to drill locations that the Shape Oko can't normally reach. The inserts can be installed with a hex key, although the fit can be a bit loose if you're using an SAE set. The entire process will take the better part of an afternoon, so grab some earplugs and find a way to pass the time. When the entire process is finished, you'll have a CNC that's not only ridiculously good looking, but also very easy to clamp work pieces to. We might need something to clamp things down with. How about some simple 4 inch plywood slats with a slot cut out for quarter inch bolts? I sketched these out in Inkscape, oversizing all of my dimensions by 1 8 of an inch. This way, I could just run a follow path operation on the lines, leaving behind a perfectly sized clamping aid. 
I made a few of these because if you want to secure harder materials, you'll want to double up on the clamps. Quarter inch plywood is a bit too weak to do it solo. Alright, that just about wraps up this weekend's ShapeOko project slash modification. If you have any comments or suggestions, drop them down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you sometime in February, probably.